D-D-D-I-Y. If I had a dollar for all the producers that I've met that finally got their first placement, and before that placement dropped, they told the world, and they ain't have no placement no more, I'd have enough money to buy you a placement. <laughs> This is a post where producer culture has made a compilation of speaking too soon before a placement comes out. It's all coming together slowly, you know what I'm saying? I don't care how slow it might be, how, how quick it might be, bro. Like, I'm, I'm in it for all the ups and downs, bro. Like, I done, I done had 15 songs of Future and only one of them dropped, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, people can't... I don't think about that stuff as much as I should, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm so locked in, I'm so focused on getting the job done you know what i'm saying that's all that matters to me and i'm gonna get it done so it's like i don't care what's in the way bro i'm, I'm gonna get this shit done you feel me i'm gonna make sure everybody hears my stuff and i'm able to inspire and i'm able to motivate and like that's my number one you know what i'm saying so it's like and just having fun while doing it so i think sim represents another end of producers that are getting placements that are not waiting on that placement to drop before they make their next move this is their job is to plant as many seeds as possible, to work with as many artists as possible, whether they're emerging, already present, whether they're a part of a writer's camp or a producer's camp. These are producers that are full-time producers that are there to work and get their placements. And Sim just said right now that when he locked in with Future, there were 15 songs that he did. There really wasn't a need to go around talking about it or bragging about it or you know doing that thing that producers do when they get on social media and they be like thank you god for all y'all that doubted me the next few months ain't no mistake y'all gonna eat them words real soon you know that energy shut up stop it stop get some help getting the job done you know what i'm saying that's all that matters to me and i'm gonna get it done so it's like he's saying that he's working so much there's not enough time to sit there focused on the one placement that he may have at, because he locked in with 15 songs with future he's moving on to the next thing and allowing the chips to fall where they fall now that is a luxury not everybody is afforded the same luxury but i think there is something to learn from it if this is something that you want to pursue next one up out there let's go pool beats be a number one hit and shit, I'ma continue to work. I ain't even, to be honest, I don't even speak on my placements and shit, like, cause I feel like that throw the energy off of it too. You get to telling people, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just continue to work. And then, like I said, they hit up, either hit me up or hit my manager up. He called me, be like, shit, you got a placement? All right, bet, do my paperwork and shit, let that shit be. Cause some people be too like anxious and shit. Like, I didn't call producers like, hey, we got the pro we got a song on such and such. They calling me every day. I want this coming out. Uh, that's why I was like, I don't even tell niggas no more. Cause it's like, you fucking the energy up. You about to, they about to call me and be like, we ain't even using no more. Cause you so anxious. Like, you know what I mean? Niggas be thinking like, oh, labels ain't gonna hit you up. But they finna drop the song. Swear. They finna find you. Like, yeah, they gonna you know A lot of producers, especially those who've never got placements before or have never been in rooms with folks who move a certain type of way, don't know how to calm those emotions down or calm that excitement down long enough for the blessing that they want to brag about so bad before it even comes to fruition. That represents so many damn producers and it almost represented me first placement i got with ab soul or when he when he signed a tde was with uh his label mate uh, it was a guy younger guy named k dot <laughs> he would live on to become kendrick lamar and i remember when soul shot me a text and told me hey you got a spot on the project you got to keep this on the low it's featuring k dot and i was like oh shit and some people be too like anxious and shit like <laughs> I didn't call producers like, hey, we got the pro we got a song on such and such. They calling me every day. I want this coming out. Uh, that's why I was like, I don't even tell niggas no more. I learned very quickly by going back and forth to TDE Studios and seeing they made it very clear. They had a checklist that they had on the wall that told you what the expected conduct was of anybody that goes into these studio sessions. And I started to notice some people came in sometimes and you never saw them again. That code of conduct, I think I've still been living by it because it had things like don't do no goofy shit, put everybody on the camera. Don't be asking no ridiculous questions. Every team is not the same way, but I can say one thing that I think is very common amongst all the different situations that I've been around as a producer. People do not want you out here revealing what their details are, especially if they feel like they're in competition with the people that you could be revealing these details to. You fucking the energy up. You about to, they about to call me and be like, we ain't even using no more because you 
so anxious, like, you know what I mean? Especially if they're building up excitement, you blabbing around information with the potential to go viral because we all share the same internet compromises the push. Say you're a sample maker and Pooh Beats brings you into the room and you start acting goofy, they're going to look at him different. So why would they ever bring you back in there? If you don't know what to say, shut the fuck up. How about that? Next one up is Eli Brown. How long is that before the album? Like, do you have to be quiet for a bit? Are you like, when can you say your voice? Have you got this joint? I mean, you're supposed to be quiet until it drops, period. Like, you don't want that to bad energy. And as well as you don't want to like mess up artists just roll out too. Um, I don't remember if I got it two days before or I got the day of one of the two. Damn. Shut up. Stop doing all of that, that Twitter posturing. Oh, I see everybody out here getting their placements. Y'all gonna see. You gonna get yours, B. You gonna get... Shut up! Bellyhead ass. Shut up! You about to ruin your blessings. Eli Brown even expresses that he believes that there's a spiritual energy around that. You ever had, like, one of your homies big up you? You playing NBA 2K and you like, man, my boy's the greatest I ever seen. I he finna run this shit up. Watch, watch, watch. Patting you on the back all hard. Then your ass get beat. And at the end of the game, everybody's sitting there quiet. It's the worst feeling in the world. There's a lot of producers out here who be killing their blessings. They can't wait to flex on whoever said that they wasn't going to be nothing. It ain't worth it. Especially when in your mind you say, I'm supposed to do this. I am a professional. I plan to be here for a long time. I am not surprised by this. I'm grateful for it, but I'm not surprised by it because I am a professional and I'm supposed to be here. This is uh, Bugs Ronan. A placement's never out until it's out. And I remember he said on his story, like, it was like a Thursday or like a, maybe it was more like a Tuesday, Wednesday. And he said, like, eternal it take two weeks. And then it just comes out like that Thursday or whatever. Did you know at that time was paperwork done and everything? So, oh, um, yeah. I Look, you know what's funny about all of these responses? The producer's answer was silence. They still feel like they got to be silent about a project that already came out. <laughs> I've gotten paperwork before that though, and it still didn't right, drop. Right, that's, so, like, that's a good point. It was like, yeah, it was like, all right, here we go again. Like, here's another one, you know. And I, I didn't believe it till like the day, the day before, or the track list came out, and I was like, all right, this shit about to drop. That's a good point though. Like, it's never out until it's out. Like a lot of people Facts. like to say it's not official until there's paperwork, but that even that's not true. Like, it's actually never out until it's out. Yeah, nah, he, he, he's just like me, though, like, impulsive as hell, so he could drop tomorrow if he wanted to. This doesn't just apply to placements in the traditional sense with artists. This also applies to sync opportunities. I had one recently with a huge athletic shoe company. There was a lot of work that was required of me to conclude this project successfully. I did the work. There might have been about 15 drafts while staying as tight lip as possible. And I'm glad I didn't because after all that work, which they said that they really enjoyed it, they chose to only show that commercial when people visit their headquarters in-house. Initially, I thought it was gonna be for TV. That's what they said it was gonna be, but plans change. You have to, especially as a producer, protect your reputation. And when your work can't be the thing that's talking for you, people pay more attention to what you're actually saying on your own behalf. And if you're somebody who just looks like you got a lot of you got a lot of thirsty energy on you, people will starve you of opportunity. They won't invite you to studio sessions because they're just chatty patties. They can't stop running their damn lips, not just about the business that they're trying to currently get placed for, but other people's business. You see, there are people who are perceptive enough to recognize that the way that you talk about people that are not in the room will one day be the way that you talk about the people that are currently in the room. You're wondering why you're not getting invites back in the room. You wonder why it seems like people tell you one thing. Maybe it's not that everybody hates producers. Maybe you just fit the category of producers that are easy to hate. The ones that fuck up rollouts because their ego is talking so loudly and needs the world to know about what they got coming. I think that's also the dope thing about what the majority of all these producers said. When you continue to work, you concern yourself less about the last thing you did. 
and whether or not it's going to be successful. When you engulf yourself in the work, you don't put that much concern about, hey, did we, do, did we get that future placement? Can you hit him up again? Talking to your manager. Can you hit him up again, please? Maybe maybe I should send a stems in an MP, MP3 because it's easier to download. Head ass. Occupy your mind with the next move being your best move. The world does something very interesting in that when you're detached from the things that you're obsessed over, you're detached from the things that you're like, I need this to come. I need this to happen. They have a weird way of actually happening when you put your focus elsewhere. Those are my final thoughts. What do you think? DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.